It's great to be in the house of God. Amen. Shine, Jesus, shine. How about shine through us? Shine Amen. through. Let our face be the happy face. Amen. <laughs> that God will shine through us to, to others. Let's pray. Dear God, let there be the light of your face shining upon us. Let us see you. Let us talk to you. Let us listen to you, God. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 Welcome to the Lent season of the church, of the Christian calendar. Lent is a time of 40 days in between Ash Wednesday and Holy Week, in which we remember Jesus' prayers and temptations during 40 days in the desert, just up after baptism. And in the same way as Jesus went to be in the house of God, the desert, can the desert be the house of God? Amen. It can, because he went there to pray. So as Jesus entered into that holy space that he made holy because he was in communion with God, and God came over him and gave him power to resist temptations, so we pray that we, during these 40 days, we get stronger and closer to God so that in Holy Week we can really walk with Jesus, the passion, his suffering, his death, and then be resurrected into a new life. So I invite you to go through Lent with that spirit of giving up anything that bothers us, anything that hinders that search for God. One day, there was a young man who had this same idea. He wanted to get closer to God and uh, pray and listen to God and grow in wisdom. And uh, he went to the rabbi with a cup of coffee in his hand. I guess there are some things we cannot let go of. <laughs> Either a cell phone, <coughs> or an iPad, or, a, or a, in previous times, it used to be a cup of coffee. I see myself in that. So this young man goes to the rabbi, and he's, as he's drinking, he says, so uh, rabbi, I want you to help me be closer to God and gain wisdom. So they sit down, and the rabbi uh, gets the care of the coffee pot, and begins to pour more coffee in his, in his pot, in his, uh, in his cup, and continues to pour and pour and pour until the coffee was uh, overflowing, and it was overflowing over the plate and almost burns his hand, and the young man says, what are you doing? Well, I am teaching you a lesson. I am teaching you a lesson. You come to me for wisdom, the first thing that you need to do is make space, make room for God to fill you up. You are so busy, you are so filled up with so many things, you are so entertained and so uh, divested, so uh, interested in other things, that if you want to think, if you want to get closer to God, the first thing to do is to make space. Make space, make room that God will fill you up. That is, that is what we do in Lent. We set time apart to read the Bible, to pray, to fast. We give up food. Some people do, at least. Um, last year, we fasted in church uh, on Sunday mornings until uh, the time to go to coffee and donuts came. <laughs> it was just a couple of hours of fasting. But it does help. <laughs> when you make time to seek God and to search and to read the Bible, God talks to you. If you make that room, if you make that space, come with an empty cup. Empty yourself from everything else so that God can fill you up. So here we have in this beautiful reading from Mark chapter 1. Uh, Jesus is just being baptized, and it almost feel, feels like 
Jesus' coronation, or a graduation, or a commencement ceremony. When he goes to baptism and the heavens open and a voice from God is heard. You are my beloved son, in you I am well pleased. You will never guess what the following line is. The next screen, the next slide is right there. You are my beloved son. I was waiting for you from the time in which the world was created so that I could send you as a savior. You are my beloved son. I am pleased with you. Now just go into the desert and be tempted and live with the animals and with the scorpions and with the serpents and with the wild beasts and spend time there. Do you see the movement? From one, one, at, at one second God is saying, you are my beloved son, I love you, I am so well pleased in you. And then God says, go to the desert and pray. How many mothers are willing to do that with their children? I love you so much, now I'm kicking you out of the house. <laughs> uh, um, the wild beasts do that. The tigers, the lions, they have, once they have spent enough time with their cubs, teaching them, then they kick them away to grow up. And, and, and we send them into a time in which they have to fend for themselves and grow. I say, mothers, fathers, how many of you are willing to do that for your children? Then I should also ask, how many of us are willing to do that ourselves? Feel the love of God, feel the voice of God telling us, I love you. Now I need you to go into the desert and get closer to me. So that is what uh, Lent is about. It's a time in which we need to get closer to the Lord so that we can grow empty ourselves from so many things that are entertaining us, distracting us from the real goal that we have in Christ Jesus. God is pleased with us, but there is a world to be saved. And in the same way as God was sending Jesus, as we prepare to celebrate Holy Week, as we get closer to Lent, we remember that God also wants to send you and me into this world as God's prophet. The stakes are very high. This is not a trip to the desert to enjoy some vacation. I guess you can, I could take my camera to the desert and take some pictures. Uh, but that's not what God is talking about here. It's going into the desert because there is a critical situation for the world. And we need to prepare ourselves to be God's instruments, God's servants. So in the case of Jesus, uh, he had obviously the entire salvation of the world in, in his heart, saving our souls and saving our world too. There is a text that I love, it's uh, from the Gospel of Luke chapter 19, and I put it on the screen. Chapter 19, verses 42, 41 to 44, because I like this text, because this reminds me of Jesus' mission. And you see, sometimes we think that our purpose in life is to save souls, and it is. Save lives. But more than saving lives, God needs you and me to save our city, to save our nation, to save our country to save our world, to save nature, to save God's creation, that also God is pleased with it. You see, in the same way as God said to Jesus at baptism, you are my son in which I am well pleased, when God was looking, contemplating the world that he created with his hands, God said, God saw that what he created was good. So here, as we just fast forward a little bit to uh, Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem, 
Jesus is lamenting and telling all the inhabitants of the city, if you, Jerusalem, if you, even you, if you had only known on this day, on this day, what would, what would bring you peace. But now it is hidden from your eyes. And that is why I need to go to the desert to get clarity of vision. There are so many things hidden from our eyes and we need to pray that God will give you sight, that God will give us vision. So, Jesus says to Jerusalem, now these things are hidden from your eyes. The days will come upon you when your enemies will build, on, will build an embankment against you. They will encircle you and they will hem you in on every side. They will dash you to the ground. You and your children within your walls. They will not leave one stone upon another because you did not recognize the time of God's coming to you. You see, Jesus is lamenting here the destruction of Jerusalem that would happen approximately 37 or 40 years after Jesus' crucifixion, when in the year 70, uh, the Roman legions invaded Jerusalem and literally there was no one stone, one stone left upon another. Literally. They took all the walls down. The, the only walls standing up, you can go to Jerusalem and see them. I hope one day I can go and see them. The surrounding walls of the temple, there's only one side of it. That's a memory of the previous glory of Jerusalem. And Jesus is lamenting here and crying, oh, if you had known, if you had recognized what would have been for your peace. So notice that Jesus has an interest in the salvation of Jerusalem, <coughs> in the salvation of our world. And uh, uh, I don't know what would have happened if Jerusalem had listened to Jesus. It would be nice to guess. I guess that Jesus would still have been crucified, uh, but maybe the history of Israel and Jerusalem would have been a different one. I don't know how. This is not the time to speculate. But our life is so different when we pay attention to God. Our, not only our future life, our eternal life in heaven with God. Eternal life can begin now. Salvation and peace and love and prosperity can begin now if we learn to understand what is for our peace. The gift, the gift that God is offering to you for free and to me. So in those times, Jerusalem was completely blinded and they did not realize that they had before them the author and creator and savior of their lives. We need Lent. We need to go to the desert so that we can eliminate so many distractions. We, know to fa we, we need to fast. We need to seek God. We need to read the Bible. We have a little prophet in our church who is never tired. Uh, her name is Barbara Williams. She might have been with the children because I don't see her here. Uh, she's working with the children, but she was. She came to the office this week and she said, Pastor, what are we going to do for Lent as far as reading and studying? What kind of devotionals will we have? We didn't have prepare a devotional for Lent, and we did not. A daily devotional. So here is my suggestion to you. Uh, my sermons during Lent are going to be based out of the book of Mark and then the book of John. Those are the two Gospels that are, I will be using through uh, uh, this 40 days all the way through Holy Week. How about if you take time to read these two Gospels during Lent? Mark is only 16 chapters. John is only 21, altogether 37 chapters. If you read one chapter a day, you have three extra days to, to get behind and to do something else, or to read something else, if you like to read something else. 
Don't you feel that you come alive when you open the Bible and Amen. you let God inspire you? Amen. It's like all of a sudden we're in the desert when we open the Bible and nothing distracts us and we have an opportunity to be in communion with the Lord. Think about what is at stake. In the times of Jesus, Jesus had uh, the salvation of his nation at hand. He was hoping that he could make a difference for Israel and for Jerusalem. History didn't have to be the way it was. Um, of course, God is always there to save us and to give us new opportunities. And uh, the new opportunity for our nation and for our city is you and me. So I invite you to pray during Lent that our eyes will be open. <coughs> And that God will show us what is it that we need to do to be prophets and prophetess for our city and for our nation. And for your own family. For your own children. When will you have the wisdom to say to your children, I have nurtured you, I have done everything I can for you, now it's time for you to go into the desert as God sent Jesus into the desert. How can we have the wisdom to know when that time comes? And for ourselves, when can we have the wisdom to ascertain, to discern when God is calling us to a new ministry? Something new that God wants us to do. You know, Jesus was not uh, a preacher of the kingdom of God all his life. Throughout his early years, he, we understand that he was a carpenter with his father and with his mother. And then one day he was baptized, sent into the desert 40 days, and then he began a new ministry. Is God calling you to a new ministry? Your life might be completely different from what you have done all the way through here. How many second and third careers people we have here in the church? Maybe God has a new career for you. Maybe God wants to use you with the power of the Holy Spirit in a new way, in a powerful way, in a way that God had never used you before. But without you, know, without you knowing it, God has been preparing you for that. I invite you to pray your lament and ask all of those questions. God, what do you have in store for me? How can I serve you? As you read through Mark and through John, maybe you will have the answer. Next Sunday, my sermon will be based upon Mark chapter 8. If you read through, through Mark 8, you will, we will be together next, next Sunday. Through the end of uh, Mark chapter 8, a beautiful chapter, a challenging chapter. It's one of the central chapters in the Bible. So I invite you to, just for a moment, let your cup of coffee aside. Love and let go. Let go of anything that is hindering you to be closer to God. When we love and let go, then we love and we let God. When you let go, then you let God. God will lead us, God will march ahead of us and with us into the new victories for your family, for your life, for our church, for our city, and for this nation that we love so much. As I was saying on Wednesday, during Ash Wednesday, there is no other nation that I have. Um, this is where God brought me, where God brought you. We need to be prophets and prophetess in this nation. Let's pray. Dear God, sometimes our eyes are blinded by our daily occupations. We come to you for wisdom, but we bring our, our cup already full of stuff that hinders. And we are entertained or 
distracted by so many things. Help us to focus on you, God, and give us that second or third or fourth career that you have for us. In your name we pray. Amen.